straight up and down, a little bit more height versus width. I've made some marks here just so that, you know, you guys can see everything that I'm doing. I have a little binder clip holding things together. I live and I die by binder clips. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do for today is I'm going to first kind of um, mark out, and I'm just, I'm not even using pencil today. I'm just using ballpoint pen. And so what I'm going to do first is kind of figure out where am I going to put my face. I'm mostly doing the face of an old man, so I'm going to kind of block in where I'm going to go with the face. And kind of like the lesson that we had last week, all right, I'm just going to do kind of an inverted um, egg shape. Again, more round at the top, longer at the bottom. And I'm going to kind of little little light marks here to demark where I'm putting my eyes. And again, this is going to be um, all covered up later as I go through with my marks for the ballpoint pin. All right? Hi, guys. Hi, Dalton. Hey, Zach. Right in all the waves. I don't know who you are, but your handle's really cool. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to figure out where my eyes are going to go, and I'm going to... This is an older gentleman, and I'm leaving space about one eye width from the other eye. Okay. And I'm going to quickly kind of do this. So these are kind of half moon shapes here. Some eyelids, and as as folks get older, eyelids get a little bit less, let's say, elastic. All right. I'm going to have my guy kind of looking to the right, or excuse me, to his left. Okay, so I'm marking this out here. Again, one eye width apart between here and here. That's another eye. Just imagine there's another eye there. Hey, coach. Hi, Hugo. All right. I'm going to use this demark here and kind of rotate down. That's where my nose is going to end, right around here. I'm just going to get to a little spot right there. Lips, too, as well. I'm going to come from this, this measurement here and go down. That's where my lips are going to end, or the middle between the top lip and the bottom lip. All right. So I'm going to give this guy a lot of character. And again, I'm just kind of sketching in areas with the ballpoint pen. And then I'm going to go in with the shading. So width of the nose. And I'm going to draw, give him kind of a bigger nose. As we get older, the things that stop growing... You know, for me, it's been my hair slowed down a little bit. But the nose, the cartilage in our nose and our ears, they continually grow. And so, yeah, they get bigger and bigger as we age. So I'm giving this kind of, this guy kind of a really characteristic kind of fun nose to draw. A lot of wrinkles. And I'm just going to do an indication of a bottom lip. Because I know I'm going to probably cover up the top lip with a beard of some sort. All right. Hey, young Jay. No, that basically be like drawing myself, bro. Why would I draw myself? Maybe I'll do that in the future. All right. And now I'm going to go back up here. And I'm going to fill in the iris and the pupil. I'm going to darken these values in here and work on the iris pupil over on this right hand side eye ok 
Okay, I'm just also kind of scribbling too. I'm not trying to make this a really clean drawing. A lot of senses. I'm gonna darken these values. Okay. I'm gonna give him some really heavy. You know, just kind of putting notes in him. Really heavy kind of bags under his eyes. Like the dude's seen some city years. Does that make sense? Hi, right, Ninja. Okay, now I'm gonna start adding wrinkles and putting in notes here for myself. <laughs> Maybe he's a little disgruntled because, you know, as you get older, the aches and pains of life, they are real. Maybe some errant hairs growing all around. Okay. Wrinkles on the forehead. We're gonna just put some notes in for right now. Okay. Crow's feet. And again, we're gonna kind of put our shadows on this side, and our light source is going to come from the right-hand side. Okay. The more lines, the better. And I'm just putting in notes right now, just kind of like... Um, Taking notes or shorthand when you are when you're in a kind of a, a lecture in college, these are the same kind of thing that you can come back to and, and kind of really get into later. Okay. Overlapping some of these eyes. And again, I'm just kind of having fun with making some interesting lines that I can go in and darken and shade and really flush out as three-dimensional form. Okay. A lot of times, the focus or focal area of a portrait is going to be your subject's eyes. So you really want to make sure you're doing something cool with them. Give a little shadow right here. I'm just, again, scribbling. Not getting too careful here. Not, not trying to make this precious. Okay. And then again, we're just using the ballpoint pen that you can find in any hotel lobby or at any college recruiter kiosk. Okay. So the next step is to figure out, you know, am I going to give this guy a beard? What kind of hair is he going to have? So, um, let's start at the top here. All right. And what's going to happen is I'm going to, again, kind of put in the volume and information of where I want my beard to go. And so I'm going to start here on the outside and just kind of do an outline of where I want this old man's beard to kind of go how high up on the face all right because this is kind of an unkept old man so again i'm cutting now in with pen marks to kind of cover up certain parts of the lips notice how i preserve this area here which is the bottom lip and I'm going to pull down. Zap is red. Hey. Hey, Connor. Hello, Maura. Long time no talk. So again, I'm going to go through on this outside and just kind of figure out where is this beard going to live? You know, how, how scraggly and unkept is this guy going to be? I'm going to pull the beard all the way kind of down. And I'm just kind of keeping my my marks loose and fun and just like 
not being too careful, if that makes any sense. I come around here, pull it up into up close to his cheeks a little boy. <laughs> yeah, and just have fun with the lines here. And as you, if you've seen some of my other lessons, my other live lessons, you know that we're gonna come back in and and really spend some time on the hair and making it look kind of flushed out and realistic. I want this guy to look like he's had some city miles. He's had some hard living. We're gonna give him a hairline comes up this way. And we're gonna give him some long hair. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, he might be old, he might have some city miles on him, but let's give him a full head, yeah? We're going to cover up his ears. I'm going to give him some hair back here, maybe coming down. It's blending into his... Into his beard a little bit. Yeah, this is fun. This is coming around. Check our proportions. Yeah, top of the head. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. There, that's fun. Okay. And maybe tighten on that forehead a little bit. So now we have a good kind of idea. Of, we got our got our wizard here. Looks like a wizard. Could be a guy. Right now, hanging out, Monterey. Not doing so hot. Okay. So now, what we're going to do. We're gonna start shading in this area here. All right, areas underneath the, the hairline. We're gonna darken these areas over here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do initially is just start going in and scribbling. And cross hatching a little bit, but mostly just scribbling and overlaying different lines and building that value that way. So, the more time I spend in a certain area, the darker my values are going to be. And again, I'm kind of using a distant grip. You know, not not here, but kind of here. You have to kind of angle your pen though as you're doing this, or you're not going to get good marks. It's going to not stay. As in, like, if I go too far to one angle, the ball is not going to be coming into contact. The ball within the pen is not going to come into contact with the paper. So you have to be mindful of that. So all this over here is going to be in shadow. So I'm going to darken all these values really dark, really dark. Now this is actually a lesson that I 
am encouraging. This is a what we call a synchronous activity right now. Me doing a live lesson and then also posting this on my YouTube channel. And I encourage you all, click the link in my bio for my YouTube channel and subscribe if you want to check out some of the videos. I'm going to be building up a, uh, quite a library. But this is a synchronous activity that my students who are in my Art One class can definitely engage in today or later on if you are checking out my YouTube channel. Now, the more pressure I apply, the darker my lines are going to be. And I kind of want to stay away from just doing really hard lines. I want to build up value slowly just by scribbling. And you really can't make a mistake here. If I make a mistake, well, guess what? I'm going to cover it up. If I make a value too dark, well, I can change that too as well. So I'm going through now and just kind of adding values, really dark values. I want to preserve a lot of his beard as white. So I'm going to do some lines here that create the illusion depth by putting the darker values beneath the beard, which I want people to see as white. Now I'm shading the bottom lip to give it some volume. And I'm using directional lines to also show the curvature of the lip. You guys see that? I'm also going to come from the bottom here. Around and from the bottom of the beard. To show an outline, but not really an outline, more like the background. Hi, Rihanna. Hey, princess. When y'all getting married, yo? <laughs> so I'm just going through and just kind of pushing values and I'm building up values here and I'm pulling them up to show the beard itself. Not necessarily gonna be drawing singular strands of the beard, if that makes any sense. Keeping it loose. And I love doing pen drawings like this. Why? Because I can do them on meeting agendas, on the corners of copies that are given out to me at meetings. And I usually am carrying a pen, so I can do a lot of really cool pen drawings on meeting agendas. And I just, I don't know. Do I really need a copy of the agenda? Okay, well, if you want me to draw, that's what I'm gonna do with it. So we're going through right now. I'm just having fun with creating some really cool lines. I'm not getting too, I'm not making this precious. Combination of scribble and cross hatching, okay? So I'm going to go through and also preserve this guy's eyebrows, which are going to be more white than anything. Uh, 
I'm using also directional lines to describe the curvature of faces, as you can see. Constantly building on value here. So as I get closer here, I'm also going to make these marks darker. It's going to be his hair. And this is creating that, again, that feeling of depth and illusion, which you're trying to accomplish in a lot of your uh, narrative or representational drawings. Hi Sam. Hey Carter. Okay, it's not McFarlane, okay? Cute. Cute Sam. Cute. Okay, it kind of looks like McFarlane, but it's not meant to be McFarlane. So I'm going to use uh, some cross hatching on this side. Because we're already 21 minutes in. Okay, not quite. It's not McCarty. Maybe McCarty in like 50 years. And also fed up with kids. Sage. Hope you're doing your work. Thank you for sharing your images with me of your progress on your projects. I really appreciate it. Way to stay on top of it, kid. So again, we're going to go in with the scribble technique to build up build up our values so this is again a project that I assigned my art one kids and this is not this is not necessarily the only way to do this but I'm having fun with it right now So right now I'm going to use a cross hatch on this side in combination with the scribble. Show these wrinkles. I'm gonna draw heavier lines here to indicate these wrinkles.
Do, do, do. All right, so. I'll go through. And I'm going to start cutting in a little bit on into the beard. And I'm going to use crosshatch to make this happen quickly. So, first going in one direction. And I'm gonna get pretty tight with my lines. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. And this is gonna start making it kinda look like an etching. The reason I'm doing this is so that my beard kinda pops. Cause it's gonna be primarily black, uh, white, excuse me, white. Oh, pen, don't fail me now, John. Come on. Pen's kind of getting a little harder to get this ink out. Now I'm gonna go horizontally and get tighter with the lines, meaning they're gonna be closer together. So I've gone diagonally to the left and diagonally to the right. And now I'm going horizontally. And I'm tightening or narrowing the space between the lines that I'm making right now. put in a little bit more pressure on the pen as I go. Okay. Now I'm going to start cutting in on the edge here. To give some definition to the beard itself. with heavier and I'm adding more pressure to the pen as I go. And using directional lines to kind of define which way the beard is going. You see that? What's up, Leo? So again, if you're only catching, if you're only catching this section of the live and you missed it and you want to do this uh, on your own, go to the link in my bio, click on the link to my YouTube channel and you can watch this whole thing from start to finish. If you have any questions about this process and you don't have my email address, just DM me and I will help you. I hope you guys have been having fun with these live sessions that I've been putting out. I have had a lot of fun doing them so far. Um, tomorrow, I'm thinking of possibly doing a crayon drawing tutorial. All right, we're gonna connect some of these.
Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, now that we have a lot of this information done, we're going to go through and start putting in the hair. And that's what I get for trying to wave. Okay. So now I'm going to use a technique that I, I, I teach my students how to do when it comes to their graphite drawings. And that's chunking the hair. And we're going to kind of keep it, we're going to make it a little bit darker than the beard. So what I'm going to do is when we chunk, we kind of create a space within the field here. And when I say field, I'm talking about the larger areas of the hair. And we're gonna chunk it, meaning that we're gonna put kind of certain sections of the hair in a described kind of space. So how that works is, hi CJ, we're going to have darker values closer to the hairline here. And then as it's coming to the end of its little space that I've defined here, I'm gonna also kinda of go through and darken those values too as it dives down into a next shape. And then just kind of draw some indication lines that way. Same thing here. And these values closer to the hairline are always gonna be darker, okay? Cause they're not getting hit by the light. So I'm gonna darken these values here. And I'm, yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm putting more pressure on my pen. Get these darker results here. Just like so. And again, I'm, I'm making marks that are going in the direction of, the, of how I want the hair to be interpreted, if that makes any sense. This guy's got messy, unkept, uncouth hair. So I might just keep the details to a minimum and darken a lot of the values in the back here. And again, this is just another technique, darken the values because the things further in the back are gonna be darker. So I want, again, all the focus to be here on the eyes here. So I'm just filling in this area back here as like an outline. I'm gonna put more information in here. And as I get closer to the top, I'm going to release those other areas. I'm not in dark shadow, but I'm gonna... Up here, I'm gonna allow light to be hitting it. I'm gonna darken these values here, darken these values up here, but keep a little bit of light. As you can see, kind of pushing this. There's just some messy hair back here. Little pieces of unkeptness, which creates that illusion. Maybe there's a Those gives that illusion, forces these hairs up here to be in the detail, you know? 
again, creating that, that depth of field and that illusion. Okay. Do, do, do. So now all I'm doing right now is just kind of filling this section in and we're, we're good on time. We're already 34 minutes in and we're doing good. So again, I want these marks to go in the direction that I, of the hair as it's going. I darken these values here. Again, I'm just scribbling. I'm not making this precious, but I am being purposeful in the direction of my marks. If that makes any sense. See that? So we'd have pretty much this side of the head done. Give it a little bit more. As if it's diving behind. Woo, that was a big... Sometimes with these ballpoint pens, they tend to release a lot of ink at once on accident. I want to build up some values here and not make it look so flat. There. All right, now, ooh, a lot of, a lot of messy. I'm gonna go on this side and I'm going to concentrate on doing this side of the hair. And this side's going to be, a lot of it's going to be in shadow. So I'm going to darken these values over here a lot. Again, scribbling. Distant grip. More shadows on his head. But again, keeping my marks going in the direction of a, of a forehead here. A little bit of cross hatching, boom, boom, boom. It's okay to show my marks. Hey, Nate. Hello, Hayden. So I'm gonna come over on this side and just really start Pouring on some heavier marks. Again, lines closer to the hairline are going to be darker. Giving them a part up here, darken these lines, these values up here. some direction and then darkening these areas here. Giving these a little bit of direction, putting in some stray marks too as well, like stray hairs. He is an unkept old man.
And again, I'm just using a scribbling technique. And cross hatching, kind of blending the, both techniques. It is true, there are a lot of my fellow colleagues at Carmel High School who, given t enough time, could really go for this look. Okay, I'm gonna chunk. More pressure, closer lines, closer scribbles. Darken these values up here, just by going over them. And again, I'm just using a distant grip and applying a little bit more pressure. And chunking. Darker value closer to the part. And doing a little division there too as well. And now I'm gonna smooth this out. You guys see that? Darkest value is going to be where the part is to give it some more weight. Okay. Now I feel like I need to spend a little bit of time on the beard. I'm going to go and kind of just slowly build up. Some definition by adding some darker values. And cutting into at the top using the lines. See that? Keeping them kind of sporadic. down. Okay. Same thing over here. Darken these values and cutting up a little bit into the face. Hope you're using those books, Nate. Those are good books, man. Hey, Bianca. I love you too, young Jay, man. I miss you. I miss my stunt double. I miss my mini me. I really do. I hope you're well. Are you enjoying Menlo? Trying to convince, um, Elon to apply there his senior year. What do you think? Should he go? Hi, Bianca. Cool. A little cross hatching here. Darken this side with just some fast marks here. Oh, he looks like a grumpy, grumpy dude. All right, so I'm gonna go through now and kind of darken 
the iris here and the pupil. Give him a little shadow over there. Make it a little bit smaller. As well on the left hand side. Little shadow, little shadow. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Almost done. Darken the lines on the forehead. And then give them a little bit of shadow here too as well. Right? No, it's not McFarland. I swear. I swear it's not McFarland, guys. McFarland, if you, for those of you who do not know who he is, is a retired... Well, he's just a retired master of a lot of different things. He was my neighbor at Carmel High School. He was an industrial arts teacher, robotics advisor, auto tech wizard... But yeah, um, Merrill boot wearing, plaid wearing, apron not having, never using gloves man. Yeah. And he was a true mentor of mine when I was at Carmel High School, my first couple few years until he retired. And big ups to him for being able to retire and now go forth and enjoy his retirement and his family. But I, I miss him greatly. No, it's not. Griff. Is that Griffin Peerless? Griffin, is that you, Griff? Griffin Peerless. So we're almost done. I'm just going through and, and cleaning up some of the areas that I wanted to to kind of concentrate on. Maybe I'll chunk a little bit of this guy's beard. Some areas. I've also been watching the show Viking, so maybe that had some influence on doing a man with a cool beard. I don't know. I also have what is called beard envy because I can't grow a beard to save my life. Let me tell you, it would be a miracle and a gallon of Rogaine for me to grow a beard. And even then, I don't doubt it, I won't be able to grow a beard. So, no, okay, it's not Griffin Peerless. That's cool. So we're almost done. Tomorrow, tomorrow guys, we're going to possibly do a crayon drawing, but if you don't have a crayon, that's okay. But, or maybe I'll do another pencil drawing for you guys. If that makes any sense. So I'm gonna do a little bit of cross hatching going out. He is kind of a floating head. Maybe I'll give him a neck. All right. 
All right. So again, tomorrow we're gonna start at 11 o'clock, maybe a little bit earlier, just cause it, it enables more people to kind of know when I'm starting and you guys can watch. Again, there's no obligation to, to do it while I'm doing this. You can always go back and watch the creation of this on my YouTube channel. Click on the link in my bio. And you can subscribe. That would also help me figure out, you know, who's watching, who's not, who's using this as a resource, who's not. And for my students who participated, thank you for coming on and checking out the today's lesson. But you can always go back to it and check it out. All right. So that's it for today, guys. Again, this is a ballpoint pen drawing using just... Actually, I got through this entire lesson with just one ballpoint pen, but any ballpoint pen will work. You know, these big pens that are like pennies on the dollar, pretty much, or free pens you get from colleges, um, they work really well, okay? And you don't have to necessarily um, use... Uh, pencil drawing before you start adding your your values with just the ballpoint pen lightly sketching it out first and then you can go in and, and really do some cool things and this is just again one ballpoint pen one piece of paper um hey salvador <laughs> um again if if you missed what happened and you're just joining us now uh, go to my Instagram page, click in the bio you can uh, get to my YouTube channel I'll be uploading this video later on today. Um, and you can follow along there uh, and click subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, see you guys tomorrow at 11 o'clock. For all the all of you guys who came a little bit late, that's fine, man. I'll, I'll see you all tomorrow. Much love. God bless. Stay, stay inside. Stay home. Enjoy this uh, shelter in place. Have a wonderful day.